Hello and welcome to Chalk Talk. I'm Melody Swang. We've got a great show for you today. There were so many events taking place in the school district since our last show, and we're excited to bring these new stories to you. Let's start with congratulating some very special educators who retired from our school system this year. Three principals, one supervisor, and one very special assistant superintendent. We begin with Assistant Superintendent Bill Brady, who retires after 46 years of service to the students in St. Tammany. Everyone who knows Mr. Brady knows that he is one of the most loyal, dedicated, funny, and compassionate educators in St. Tammany Parish. Bill Brady began his career as a social studies teacher at Slidell Junior High and has been a part of the St. Tammany Parish public school system for more than 45 years. From there, he moved on to Bayou Lacombe, Shata Ima, and Covington Elementary, holding positions as assistant principal and principal before moving on to central office as supervisor, senior supervisor, and now assistant superintendent. While Bill completed his career in administration, Bill believes that children are the greatest commodity. He never forgot that his job, no matter what its title, was all about the kids. Bill knew every kid's name. And he still knows the family name. He'll see somebody, oh, that, they went to Covington Elementary or they went to Bayou Lacombe, you know. So, uh, He's, he's just always been about the kids. You can't go anywhere, lunch, breakfast, meetings, wherever, that you don't post office, you don't run into somebody that either knows Bill Brady, that he taught them, he taught their children, their grandchildren, and they all have a Bill Brady story. And amazingly, he has a story about them and can recall their names as well. There's very few kids that went through there that I didn't know their first name, their last name, the bus they rode, their homeroom teacher, their other teacher, their mom and daddy's name, their grandparents, what kind of car they were driving in, what bus they rode. And I just felt that was just uh, part of the job. It's the children that Bill has always been an advocate for, and that support has transpired into their love for Bill, especially the little ones at Covington Elementary. Along with making a lasting impact in the lives of students, Bill has also made an impact in the community for his dedication to United Way. And I just felt very strongly about it because I saw where it was helping people that I knew, individuals that I had known and had worked with and uh, families. He speaks from the heart and I think because of him people, it filters down from him through the school, whole school system and, and he's a huge, huge part of the success of United Way in the school system. His dedication to the children and tireless work supporting the United Way are not the only things that Bill has worked hard on. He is most proud of his work and partnership with the teachers union. Nobody in the country I truly believe shares that kind of partnership that we have with our federation. You can see the transformation for Bill when he first was on the committee and now he's been our chief negotiator. Teacher, assistant principal, principal, supervisor, senior supervisor, and assistant superintendent, Bill Brady has touched the lives of students, teachers, and the community in ways that will last forever, leaving a legacy that at its core is all about the children. His legacy that he leaves, I think, is just a true, deep feeling that every kid gets the best education possible. When we say every child every day, he certainly lives it as a supervisor. and He's lived it in every position he's had in the school system. Everything we do is not to make children better and give them a better opportunity and to try to level the playing field for everybody, regardless of you know, where they come from, the color of their skin, the ethnic background. I don't remember a day that I didn't just love what I was doing. Congratulations to Mr. Brady on his retirement. We wish him the best. We'd now like to acknowledge elementary supervisor Scotty Coleman for her 40 years in education. Rhett Sharp has the story. Scotty Coleman's career in St. Tammany began in a modest manner that would contradict her future accomplishments. A friend of mine said, come get into our system, sub, and see if you want to go back to work. So a week before school started, I put in an application, and by the time I got home, Mr. Clanton, senior, had called me and someone had resigned that morning. As a third grade teacher at what was then 8th Ward Elementary, she created an atmosphere in the classroom that encouraged her students to succeed. 
my strength has always been to take something difficult and complex and try to figure it out and try to deliver it in a simple way so whether it's a child or whether it's an adult can understand it easily and then have that knowledge and, and move forward and feel good that, that they can do what they thought they couldn't. From teacher to principal, Scotty moved up the ranks at what was now Bonnie Cole Elementary. Co-worker and friend Catherine Fortier explains why Scotty is such an effective leader. As a person, Scotty is warm and friendly, um, brings you into the fold. Uh, she is extremely supportive, always will defend her teachers and her employees, which in turn builds up the, uh, the feelings of wanting to teach in St. Tammany Parish. Ms. Coleman describes her time with the students and teachers on a more personal level. They'll remember the relationships, they'll remember how I made them feel, they will mem remember that hopefully I gave them confidence to do something. I just think she instilled um, pride in our system, our, our school system, and I think that she encouraged us to uh, further our educations and to um, you know become knowledgeable in what we were teaching so that we can meet everybody's needs. Finally as a supervisor of instruction at the central office she was given the opportunity to introduce her passion for education to the entire parish. Sort of feel like the mother when I looked back, look back at our summer programs or our first uh, district accreditation or our checkpoints in math and uh, to be able to be a part of creating something and leaving that. And now, after 37 years as an educator in St. Tammany Parish, Scotty has time to reflect on her time here and the memories she has collected. At the end of the day and at the end of our life, all we have is our stories. And I have some wonderful ones. I have some happy ones, hilariously funny ones, sad ones, ones I would love to rewrite, but they're our stories. And that's who we are. That's the legacy we will leave. A legacy that will leave a lasting impression on the children and teachers of the St. Tammany Parish Public School System. Bye, Scotty! We love you! Rhett Sharp, Channel 13. Scotty's plans include some trips to Kentucky to visit her granddaughter, Maddie. Let's now take a moment to congratulate three retiring principals. Laura Norsworthy, Chifuncta Middle School, Dr. Mike Peterson, North Shore High, and Deborah McCollum, Covington High. Channel 13 stopped by their schools to highlight these educators' successful careers. Good afternoon. Laura Norsworthy worked her way up through the ranks from teacher to assistant principal to principal of Chifuncta Middle School. During her 33-year career, she never lost her love for the children and the satisfaction that comes with helping these young ones learn and grow. And how do you know what to draw on? Norsworthy credits her predecessors, teachers, students, and parents for not only encouraging and supporting her in the various roles in the school system, but also for providing the professional development necessary to make those changes. I had a lot of gifts and talents that I didn't know that I had. And I I'm just feel so truly blessed to have been in this system and had the kind of support that St. Tammany provides for the, their employees. In turn, Norsworthy has returned the support that helped her so much in her career. Ms. Norsworthy is a great leader. She pulls us together as teams. Um, she works with us individually. If we need something uh, that we know that she can, she'll be available for us. Um, she's always, every decision she's ever made is what's best for the students in this school. Looking back over her 33 years as an educator, Norsworthy believes that her own learning never stopped. And I feel like I truly have been a lifelong learner and that I've learned um, every year I've been in the profession something new, something better that I, I could give and, and, and enrich me as a person, not only as a professional. A professional who will certainly be missed by her staff and students. She will be missed. People honor her respect her and a lot of us feel that she's a friend. It has been fun, it's been rewarding, um, you know, it's just been a great, great experience for me. I just don't think it could have been better. 
This is the first playoff game that they've won since 2003. Early in her career, Mrs. McCullum, a science teacher, was asked to fill a mathematics position where she turned her struggles into opportunities for her students to succeed. When I started teaching mathematics, you know, I have to tell you that I was a student that struggled with especially application problems of mathematics. It was my goal and my desire to do everything possible that I could do for a student to help them understand uh, the concepts of math and why they existed and the whole background, the whole step process, why they were doing what they were doing and why was it relevant in the real world for them to be able to do that. After stints as a curriculum specialist, then assistant principal and interim principal at Covington High, this administrator had her own real world moment when she was named principal. I was very excited. I was excited because I had, you know, experienced Covington High School already. It is truly working with a family, uh, both the community and the faculty and staff here is like you're working with a huge family. Something Mrs. McCullum seized upon immediately. She's really gotten involved with the Ambassador's Council and the community, so she's made uh, those the, that community outreach. Um, and I noticed that how she's gotten really ingrained in the traditions through reaching out to those people. You just get caught up in the uh, bleeding of blue and gold instantly, and uh, I became a Covington High fan just automatically. That gratifying feeling fit hand in hand with McCollum's philosophy of putting the students first, and they were the first to feel it. They speak highly of her. Uh, she's gone above and beyond to help them whenever they needed help. She really has put their interest uh, to the fore and, and gone above and beyond to help whomever. And, you know, so very impressive actually. She truly has a love for the students here at Covington High. And she's left a mark on her faculty as well. She's been able to infuse some growth just with a different perspective. And that's powerful. I mean, it really is. Just as this leader has been able to have a compelling effect on both students and faculty at Covington High, it will be her lion-heartedness that will cement her legacy at the school. She may have uh, not been from Covington originally, I can promise you for the rest of her life, she'll tell you this place is a special place in her heart. I dearly love this place and it will be true to my heart forever. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Ms. Harris? Dr. Mike Peterson's 37-year uh, career in education has been spent in the classroom before, teaching English uh, and on the field coaching until he landed the job of assistant principal at North Shore High, where he eventually became principal for the last 12 years. Reflecting on his successful career, Dr. Peterson credits his parents for instilling in him high standards and a real sense of integrity. I was blessed to, to, to have a, a, a good sense of right and wrong. I think everyone has that. Uh, I just, my parents made sure I paid great attention to that. Dr. Peterson also attributes his success to his deep faith. God has blessed me so much, so much and, and I, I, when, you know, you see, when you look back in your life, you see God's fingerprints on everything. And it is this outlook that allows him to see the bigger picture that has influenced how he has viewed his role as teacher, coach, and administrator. Teaching uh, is not great, as we all know, for a lot of material reasons. It is great because of what we do with people's lives and how we can contribute to their lives. That's what makes teaching so great. This is tops to be a teacher because you give and you're not a taker. And it's this desire to see his students grow, not just academically, but as future leaders and productive members of society that has been the impetus for Dr. Peterson's hard work as principal. We talk a lot about curriculum, but we also talk about the whole student. You know, what's important for them? What else do they need to learn from us as teachers, as educators, besides just the curriculum? Responsibility for your actions, stuff like that. Things that Dr. Peterson saw as important to instill in the students as well. We have the opportunity to influence the students that we teach every day, and their generation is, is, is going to make a statement, and it's going to be a statement that reflects what we have taught them.
what we have given of ourselves to them. And that's our responsibility as educators, and I think he's helped remind us regularly. It is about teaching the curriculum. It is about test scores, but ultimately it's about our students and teaching them how to be the lifelong learners and be successful and face adversity throughout their life. Students who are college and workforce ready and who have skills necessary to respond to the challenges in life. These students are shining examples of the legacy that Dr. Mike Peterson, teacher, coach, principal, and mentor, leaves behind. And for that, Dr. Peterson, we thank you. Together, these three principals have over 82 years of service to the children of St. Tammany Parish Public Schools. We wish them all the best. We also want to acknowledge the district's three students of the year. We'll first go to Bayou Lacombe and meet fifth grader Anthony Dumas, then head over to Fountain Blue Junior High to talk with Chase LaMare, and we'll end up at Pearl River High School, where John Mitchell has made quite a name for himself. As you're about to see, these three young men have one big thing in common. They are all making a difference in their schools and in their communities. What that small goes in the blank so that this list is in order for Anthony me. Dumas is a fifth grader that seems to be as introspective as he is thoughtful about his recognition as Parish Student of the Year. It's a cool thing, like to be Student of the Year. And when I found out I was for the Parish, that made me feel proud of myself and proud of everybody who helped me. Although, as we found out when we caught up with one of his teachers, Anthony is not your typical fifth grader. Anthony is very independent learner. Um, he loves to kind of hone in on an area that he can be the expert in, and he will just run with it. He's very much an overachiever when it comes to, you know, when he finds something that he loves, he wants to do it 150 percent. So he's very energetic, and that rubs off on the others. Recently, what Anthony has found that he loves to do is work in the garden that he and a few of his fellow gifted students began with Miss Ellis last year. He loves to research, and he's really just self-motivated when he's in charge of whatever plant it is that season. He will collate probably three, four binders of, you know, the entire growth process. We do enrichment activities, like in the garden, that's all science. First, we have to pick our plant that we're going to do at the beginning, and then we have to become experts at it. Ms. Ellis has done a great job with the, with the Gift of Kids and the Garden Project and, and a wide variety of things at the school. and. Uh, and Anthony, you know, really enjoys going out and working in the garden and working in the greenhouse. Anthony's scientific inquiries extend well past the garden into more philosophic undertakings. I like science because we get to do different kinds of experiments. Like if I had a tennis ball and a basketball and dropped them at the same time from the same height, which one will bounce higher? That's a good question, but there's no question why Anthony was picked to be the St. Tammany Parish Student of the Year. He's very well-rounded in that he is sensitive to the needs of others and he has a larger worldview. He's concerned about global issues. He's concerned about his community. He's like my own child. I've had him since second grade, so it was, it was phenomenal. It was so exciting, and I think this was on a whole different level. It was, it was such an honor and, a, and just an amazing recognition for him and for us as well. We couldn't be more proud. Rhett Sharp, Channel 13. Chase LaMare is an eighth grader at Fountain Blue Junior High School. He's an exemplary student, athlete, class leader, and is involved in many extracurricular activities. He's definitely a leader. Um, I can always count on him to do any aspect uh, of this class um, to help his um, fellow classmates. They go to him for sure if they have a question or a concern about something. He has great ideas. I think he leads by uh, demonstrating what he does. He, he's involved in uh, not only clubs, but a lot of sports activities here at school. I play football. I play tennis. I play volleyball. And tennis is my favorite. On the tennis court, he's earned a top 10 ranking in the state, a ranking that has earned this young athlete an endorsement from a sportswear company. It's athletic DNA, and you apply to them, and then they accept it, and they send you an email. And the opening sentence of their email was, 
Not everybody has athletic DNA, but we've discovered that you do. What are we thinking? In the classroom, he's earned a 4.0 GPA, not to mention the Parish and Regional Student of the Year honors and a State Student of the Year finalist. It's a great honor. There's a lot of good kids in the state, and to know that I'm one of the top few, well, I've been selected as one of the top few, it's very honoring, and I'm just very proud, and I can't believe it sometimes. This hardworking student is dedicated to his school, classmates, and his schoolwork. And he just gives to other kids. He gives to the school almost on a daily basis. And he's involved in a lot of things at school. Chase is committed. That is um, really a word to describe all aspects of his um, academics, athletics, um, clubs, organizations that he's in. He's 100% committed uh, when he jumps in. It's both feet and he continues the work. He's persistent with the work. A commitment that not only reflects his hard work, but sets him up as an example to other students. We are just so very proud of Chase and all that he's accomplished um, in all areas um, of his school and private life. Um, he is just, you know, he's just the best. Something Chase LaMare gives every day at school. Melody Swang, Channel 13. At first glance, John Mitchell appears to be the kind of quiet, unassuming students you might find in school today. You know the type. They show up and you hardly know they're there. But a closer look will show you a different person, a different student. I think the fact that he is quiet and that you don't realize the things that he's done or the things that he's actually doing but you want to find out more about him. Why, why is he so successful? While a 4.66 GPA on the weighted scale indicates success, there are more signs that this student is a cut above the rest. So this past summer, I worked at Stennis Space Center um, on their Naval Research Lab in the Marine Geosciences Division. He wrote a program that the submarines can use to navigate the ocean floor. An extraordinary achievement by this student who represented Louisiana in the U.S. Senate Youth Program. Two people from each state are chosen. They get flown to Washington, D.C. to meet with all sorts of powerful political figures. It's an incredibly humbling experience. As a great five state was Yet there is much more about young Mr. Mitchell that should be noted, including his participation in the senior play and talented theater production of award-winning videos and documentaries, volunteering in the community, and winning the Poetry Out Loud competition, all of this just scratches the surface of who this student really is. There are so many attributes that I could use to describe John. One is um, self-motivated. That is one of the things that has made him student of the year. An impression that earned this senior the title of Parish High School Student of the Year, Regional High School Student of the Year, and now a state finalist. I was so excited. And to know that I represented everyone who has affected me so incredibly thus far was an honor. Honors aside, a peek into the motivation that drives this outstanding student reveals a lot about his character. My father really instilled it within me a sense of serving something greater than yourself. The initial thought that John Mitchell was quiet and unassuming does not really tell his story. But his words reflect a deeper understanding of the person he has become. Decisions are made by people who show up. You have to learn to, to take risks because taking risks allows you to find amazing opportunities and to expand your horizons in a way you probably hadn't ever thought of before. My love of learning and my curiosity stems from the teachers that I've been able to interact with over the years. From elementary school where they planted the seeds to junior high where I really developed and in high school where it really all culminated. Tiger Edwards Channel 13. Special congratulations goes out to Chase LaMera for also being selected as a regional winner. 
and to John Mitchell, who was selected as the State High School Student of the Year. We'd also like to recognize another outstanding student in our school system. Megan Barr, a Beta Springs Middle School student, is the state winner in the Doodle for Google contest. An assembly was held at the school where employees from Google were on hand to not only share information about their company and website, but to congratulate Megan. Channel 13's Tiger Edwards was on hand for the announcement. We're here to talk to you about Doodle for Google. After sharing informative news and facts about Google, Google product marketer Carolyn Witte explained the Doodle for Google program. Doodle for Google is an annual program that Google hosts each year where we invite students K through 12 um, to give them an opportunity to submit artwork and design the Google logo around a theme. This year's theme was my best day ever. So we saw tons of artwork, 130,000 submissions actually, uh, from all 50 states. You know, I think I'm pretty good at doodling. Do you think I could win this contest? No, but uh, Megan Barr was the Louisiana State winner right here at Abita Middle School. That announcement was greeted by cheers from Megan's peers who were on hand to see her doodle unveiled at the assembly. I know that the excitement was building because they were all wondering why we were coming in here. And then once they got in here and saw what it was all about, I think they were very, very proud of their, their classmate. All thrills aside, the young artist explained why her drawing represented her best day ever. I came up with the idea because I love to fish and go to my papa's camp, which is in Cocodree. It's like on the bayou, right on the river, where you can just get the boat out and go down the river. There's bunch of fun things to do there. And it just so happens that her picture captures the essence of our state. I've never been to Louisiana before, so um, her doodle really illustrated what life was like here. Definitely it represents Louisiana. It's very, very creative. Megan's creativity earned her a trip with her parents to New York City, where Google will make a big announcement. There will announce the national winner. So Megan is basically in the running for a $30,000 college scholarship a $50,000 technology grant for her school, um, as well as the chance to have her artwork featured on Google.com. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. From the 130,000 entries, 250 were sent to celebrity judges. The top 50 state finalists were awarded a trip to New York City, including Megan Barr. One more student we'd like to recognize is Sean Noel, Chifuncto Middle School student, whose actions are making a difference in the community. Let's take a look at this young humanitarian's efforts in the community. Well, what really motivated me the most is my grandmother, Ida, because she was always a giver and she just loved to help people. She always taught us right from wrong and I just wanted to make sure that I could keep her spirit alive. In doing so, Sean found the inspiration to serve other senior citizens in the area with a program he called Warm Hearts. We have blankets, hats, gloves, and socks, and generally any other things that will keep people warm during cold months. We saw it as a, a logical way to, to make donations on behalf of the school. Uh, when things go left unclaimed, we process through them. Anything with names, we get returned. But then, then we donate everything else uh, so, so that Warm Hearts can use them. We've collected just about 10,000 items to date and 3,500 this year. A huge effort by the young Mr. Noel that clearly shows he has a big heart. I always like to say that if you give to a person in need, you get a warm heart and the person gets a warm heart too. So, warm hearts. Seizing on the momentum of this benevolent act, Noel also founded Sean's Factor. Sean's Factor is a program I started in 2009 after I came home from a hemophilia camp, which is a blood disorder that I have, which makes it difficult for kids with hemophilia to clot. I just wanted to help people to, so they could go there. This year, the program sold bookmarks in order to generate funds for the Hemophilia Association to assist those who cannot afford to go to the camp. We've collected about $5,000 each year, so it's very good. Another project, another success. So why not make it three? Sean's latest project is called Mandeville Remembers. Mandeville Remembers is a website where the public can access a military database of current 
former or deceased military service men and women. Men and women in the service don't get enough credit for what they've done to keep this country safe. And I felt that I could help and be one of them to show that I really care about our American veterans. Sean hopes that this website can assist schools and organizations to contact a veteran for school recognition programs or interviews. Noble undertakings by this student who truly shows his concern for others. We want our kids to be good citizens. We want them to be compassionate. We want them to be the kind of people who can solve some of the hard problems that our country um, and our world are facing. And you know, kids like Sean give us hope that um, that really can be a reality. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. If you are a veteran or an active service member, you can add your name to the database at mandevillerememembers.com. We also want to acknowledge four alumni of St. Timothy Parish Public Schools who are also making big names for themselves. Fountain Blue High's Ken Looper, a pro golfer, shot 11 under par at the Zurich Classic in New Orleans. Looper won a qualifying tournament the week before the Classic to earn his way into the field of his first ever PGA event. During the third round, Ken produced one of the highlights of the tournament. It's Looper playing his fourth. That was just a choke down hybrid, Jim. What a go shot. Maybe he'll make it oh. and get in. Oh! That would have been That would have been incredible. the ultimate Cinderella story. Unbelievable. A nice shot and nice finish for this alumni of St. Tammany Parish Public Schools. Looper is a regular on the National Golf Association Tour, where last year earned Co Rookie of the Year honors. Two other St. Tammany Parish alums were selected during the Major League Baseball draft. Ryan Eads, North Shore High grad and LSU pitcher was selected in the second round, 43rd overall by the Minnesota Twins. Eads had an 8-1 record with a 2.81 ERA in 16 starts for the Tigers during this season. Garrett Canizero, a Mandeville High grad and Tulane Green Wave infielder, was selected in the 18th round by the Los Angeles Angels. Canizero is the second player from his family drafted into the majors, joining older brother Andy, who was also a former Tulane Green Wave player. Finally, for the second straight year, Delaney Sheehan, a Mandeville High graduate, is the ESPN Gatorade Girls Soccer Player of the Year. During her senior season, she scored 56 goals, leading the Lady Skippers to the Division I state quarterfinals. Sheehan recently signed a national letter of intent to play soccer at Furman University in South Carolina. We wish all of these outstanding athletes the best. More good news coming out of Fifth Ward Junior High, where the future Farmers of America Club attended the annual convention in Alexandria and came away with a bunch of awards, most notably being selected as the best overall chapter in Louisiana. This is the first time in the history of FFA in Louisiana that a middle school has ever won the award. Kudos to the FFA Club at Fifth Ward and their faculty advisor, Mr. Tommy Peters. Let's now look at a couple of exciting happenings that took place in the school system recently. We begin at the rededication of the James A. Harrison Curriculum Center, where the community and school system employees gathered to cut the ribbon on the newly renovated building. Three, two, one. Cut it. Yeah. After he welcomed more than 100 Covington area residents to the rededication ceremony, Superintendent Fultz reviewed the words spoken at a school board meeting by Mr. Franklin Owens describing Mr. Harrison's career in this community. He's talked about the significant role that James A. Harrison had as a black educator in St. Tanny Parish and the positive effect he had on the teachers, the students, and the community with whom he had contact. Then, Sharon Hosh, Senior Supervisor of Special Education, further enumerated the virtues of this educator who spent 33 years as principal at this location. Students told me that Professor Harrison talked, would talk a lot about life lessons. It wasn't just about 
reading, writing, and arithmetic, but it was about life lessons. And they, he was a rule follower. I mean, he did have consistent rules, and everybody was bound to those. And then some of the teachers, some of the individuals that became teachers under Professor Harrison said that he was very supportive of them. They felt very comfortable with talking to him, and they felt like he was very supportive. Little wonder, then, that this building would bear his name. So to me, it's fitting that the vision of the work that um, takes place here in this facility is named after a gentleman that dedicated his life to making a difference for every child every day. While Mr. Harrison touched the lives of so many children, there is a community legacy and a rich history in this building, formerly known as the Rosenwald School. There's a lot of history right here where we do our work every day here at Harrison Curriculum Center. And before we moved out for the renovation, it kind of became evident when one of my staff folks came to me in my office and said, you know, Sharon, this is where I went to first grade. This was my first grade classroom. My office was her first grade classroom. So it kind of, you know, kind of really, really started to become personal. So we started to talk about it. And then I realized her parents went here too. So this was such an important building for her family and for the community. Following a video produced by Channel 13 highlighting the historical significance of the school and the legacy of its namesake, former students reflected on their time in school here. Oh, it was the most wonderful thing that I have really experienced because it was such a wonderful place to be growing up. I started here in 1951, graduated in 1955, and went on to college, became a teacher, came back here and taught. Well, I was in the first grade here, way back in the days, and uh, we sheltered from the storm in the gym back there, you know, and we used to live across the street over here, so it's just a blessing to see how the school has changed, how the, the community has come together and built the school to what it is today, and continuing on, Mr. Dr. Harrison's um, name is a blessing. I was in tears myself. Reflecting on the day, Superintendent Foles is ever mindful of our role in preserving the legacy of Professor Harrison. You know, when we made the theme Community Connections, you don't you just throw it out there and think about it, but then you realize that what you're doing every day is making those connections, and hopefully somebody 50, 100 years from now will appreciate the connections we made here. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Superintendent Trey Fulce welcomed those in attendance, saying the turnout for the special occasion was a great example of what public education is all about. Let's now head over to Covington High School, where groundbreaking ceremonies were held to officially mark construction of the Centennial Bell Tower Plaza. Central office staff, alumni, community teachers, and students gathered in the school library to celebrate and reflect on how much the Centennial Bell Tower means to Covington High. We've really tackled a job in trying to build this bell tower, a very worthwhile project, something that I hope all of you can get involved in. Commemorative bricks and a limited number of granite inlays are still available and may be ordered by calling the school at 985-892-3422. Continuing now with our historic theme, students from William Pitcher Junior High recently took a walking tour of downtown Covington to commemorate the city's bicentennial as well as get a better understanding of important places and people from its storied past. On an unusually cold and windy spring morning, William Pitcher students descended upon Old Covington in an effort to reimagine their city and the rich history that envelops the streets and buildings of their hometown. This is our Covington Bicentennial walking tour, and the purpose of it is for our students to get a better idea of our history, of where we come from, and how we've developed as a small town. A town that established itself as a center of commerce back in 1813 because of both its location near New Orleans and the river that runs through it. Can you imagine that these steamers, these schooners, would come this far up the river uh, with passengers and, and ship goods and it, it's pretty amazing to think, wait a minute, that happened right here. And of course, that's why Covington built as a, a center of commerce. It has, you know, 39 square blocks of a downtown area, commercial area, which is still a commercial area today. So it's, it's really uh, a big part of the history of Covington. 
The tour included several key landmarks essential to understanding how Covington began and prospered. We're at the cemetery. We're going to be at H.J. Smith & Sons, one of the oldest stores, the oldest store in Covington. We're going to the Columbia Street Landing. We're going to the trailhead, um, looking at the old train depot, and all different sites throughout Covington to get an idea of what Covington was like 200 years ago. Places that people go every day, and they really don't understand what it was used as 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice that they're visiting all these spots around town give them a more of a connection to the town. The students visited each site and were given the opportunity to listen to and speak with community members, including former Mayor Keith Villery, who have different connections with Old Covington. He came and he talked to us about his um, great, great, great uncle, I think it was. And it was just really cool to hear what he had to say about it. I think having that connection uh, really makes a, a big difference. And, you know, it kind of makes history a little more real when you can see a place and touch a place rather than just reading it in a book. With so many interesting places and people to see, the students all agreed that the walking tour was a hit. I think it was a very good idea because I think we need to learn more about the history and it's better to interact with the, instead of in class, like just doing with books, it's good to um, just get outside and, you know, explore. This is the first time I've really kind of explored downtown Covington, you know, and it's been really cool. Principal Rosalind Hansen posed a question to her students before they began their journey to the past that perfectly sums up the purpose of a field trip to your own backyard. I asked them to envision what Covington will look like in 200 years because they're going to be a part of making that happen. And so by looking at the past to see where we've come from, how we've developed as a small town, perhaps we can envision where we're going to be in the future. A future that gets closer with every step. Rhett Sharp, Channel 13. One other exciting event that took place in the school district recently was the visit by NBC's Education Nation to Fountain Blue High School. Channel 13 was up early that day to catch all of the action. We've got a lot of school pride behind us this morning. St. Tammany Parish Public Schools was the focus of NBC's well. Education so Nation television project right recently. Now. WDSU reporter Blake Hansen reported live on the campus of Fountain Blue High School for their early morning broadcast to showcase the many programs and educational opportunities available in our school system. Education Nation is a long-term series on NBC which examines the needs of education and spotlights what is being done across the nation. To have others outside of St. County Parish know what we already know, we have a school system we're proud of and I think today is an opportunity to showcase that. It shows that we've got a great partnership with the community, you know, and it, it, it shows that everybody in St. Tammany Parish is kind of focused on education and the importance of education. Backed by the Fountain Blue High School Crimson Band and cheerleading squad, the special reports told about some of the innovative programs at the school, including Bulldog Buddies, the Pro Start Culinary Arts Program, and the STEM Lab, with a special appearance by a student-built robot from the school's RoboDogs team. It was really cool to see with St. Tammany just um, how many unique programs that they had and the technical skills they were able to develop um, with some of those programs and a lot of hands-on skills as well. First we want to talk about their Bulldog Buddies program. The student organized Bulldog Buddy group pairs regular education students with special education students for a variety of activities throughout the year. We're very happy to uh, tell our story to the area, the state, and whoever else wants to hear about it, that we're about creating friendships between typical peers and students with special needs. The STEM lab, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, was opened recently, offering students a wide range of career opportunities in math and science. When we first found out that we had been selected for Education Nation, we almost didn't believe it, but we are absolutely pleased that we've been able to focus and highlight some of the outstanding programs that we have here at Fountain Blue High School. The Pro Start students prepared omelets in their state-of-the-art kitchen to show one example of how students at all St. Tammany Parish Public Schools have technical education options, including culinary arts. We had some action stations, we had our king cakes, we had a bulldog king cake a little after season, but that's okay. They were decorating that. They were working on some knife skills and then um, cooking some omelets. It's awesome. I mean, it's great. We got to be on national TV, so it's a big recognition. It's just a really good honor to have. All in all, this early morning shoot was a great opportunity to showcase some of the exciting programs taking place in St. Tammany Parish Public Schools. 
Education Nation is a long-term series on NBC which examines the needs of education and spotlights what is being done across the nation. Let's stay at Fountain Blue High School where 120 athletes from the district's eight high schools competed in the Florida Parishes Area Special Olympics. Channel 13's Tiger Edwards was there to report on this annual event. For the student athletes performing in this Olympic style event, this is their big day. It means a lot. They love the competition. They love the ribbons. They love being out here and enjoying the day. It's, it's a great day. We honor the athletes on a day like today. We just hold them up high and we praise them. And tonight's their Friday night. And even those not competing are thrilled about the experience. Since last year, I've looked forward to the day just to see everybody together. It's more important even to, to us as teachers and to our volunteers. Speaking of volunteers, it makes me wonder, what does it take to put on an event of this magnitude? Well, if you really want to know what it takes to put this on, you can ask Monique Bear. Well, it takes a community, that's for sure. We have a lot of people in the community who've donated food and, and made financial donations. The entire school, Fountain Blue High School, is involved in some form or fashion. We probably have about 200 volunteers on hand. And amongst the 200 that have donated their time, there are the coaches. It takes a lot of adaptive PE teachers out there coaching and preparing for our events. If you look over my shoulder right now, you'll see that everybody's resting, refueling, and reflecting on what a great day it was. But it was only moments ago that there was lots of action. Go! If you come once, you'll come back again because it just touches your heart and it's something you want to be a part of. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Some of the athletes from this competition qualified for the Louisiana Special Olympics to be held at Southeastern Louisiana University. Over at Mandeville High, some Special Olympians in the Junior High Division also had a chance to show their athletic prowess. Channel 13's Tiger Edwards brings us one of the many stories of the day, that of Special Olympian Lane Moore. While rain forced cancellation of the running events, it could not stop student athlete Lane Moore and his companions from having their day in the sun. After all, they've been looking forward to this competition. He has been coming home talking to his mom and dad about training at APE every day, and he's just been so excited. Highly motivated kid. Uh, when I got him to come out to, to class to, to train, he ran out and said, what are we doing today? He was ready. Prior to his participation in the events, Lane played a vital role in the opening ceremony. What did you do just a minute ago was very, very important. Hold a torch. And he was going to carry the torch, so that was very exciting to him. So he is, he's been thrilled for this day. That job complete, young Mr. Moore was ready for action. I like to do the softball pro, the run, and the long jump. And apparently he was pretty good at it, as Lane would win ribbons in the softball throw and the long jump. Every child's going to be a winner here. Everybody's a winner today. Everybody. That's, that's the best part of all of it. There are no losers in, in an event like today. That assessment even strikes a chord with the volunteers. We take a lot away from this. I think more than the students. Their smiles just brighten the day. Their, their enthusiasm for the sport. Their, just their joy in being out here. On a cold, overcast, and rainy day, Lane Moore and his fellow athletes find a way to brighten our day. I love you. You did so good. I'm so proud of you. It warms my heart. <laughs> it really does. It warms my heart. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Mrs. Wallace reports 115 athletes participated in the event. Let's now head to Lakeshore High for the third annual District Elementary Fitness Meet. The top two boys and girls were selected from each participating school to attend the meet.
today is our third annual fitness meet for the elementary students. Uh, we have students 11 years old and younger. That's the state guideline. So it's generally third, fourth, and fifth graders. And we have a team of three or four from every elementary school in the district. We take the top winners in the division and we'll have a team of four. We call them the Team St. Tammany and they will represent St. Tammany Parish at the state fitness meet at the LSU uh, Assembly Center. Runners, take your marks. Here it comes. We have seven events. We start with the 50 yard dash and then we divide the kids up into heats and groups. Go. And they run the shuttle run, which is a test of um, agility. We do the V-sit, which is a test of flexibility. We do the pull-ups, which is a test of the upper body strength. We do curl-ups, which is abdominal strength. We do a standing long jump, which is basically muscular uh, endurance. Then we culminate our events with a 600, which is a very cardio endurance activity. It gets better and better every year. We have more participants. Uh, the uh, enthusiasm for the event is growing each and every year. We have a wonderful elementary PE program that certainly engages all of our children in uh, exercise each and every day. And, and uh, certainly this event is just a culmination of, those, of that year's activities. It's just been a wonderful, positive experience for everyone. While the district meet ended all competition within the district, it was from this event that a team was chosen to represent St. Tammany Parish at the state fitness meet. Here's a look at Team St. Tammany in action in Baton Rouge. Listen to the instructions, you're going to have absolutely a great time. There you go, right there. That's good job. Representing Team St. Tammany at the state fitness meet was Ivy Menheim from Folsom Elementary, Sierra Ballard from Lake Harbor, and we had Micaiah Guillory, she was our alternate from Pineview. For the boys, we had Herbert Keyes from Abney, we had Landon Ibietta from Mandeville Middle School, and our alternate was Brian Gowlin from Lancaster Elementary. These competitors participated outdoors at the track and field venue on the LSU campus. Normally, the state fitness meet is held at the Carl Maddox Indoor Stadium. This year, because of construction, it was moved to the outdoor stadium, which changed things a little bit. It was a nice day. It was a little breezy. Parents came out, filled the stands. It was a wonderful day. Weather notwithstanding, Team St. Tammany did rack up some awards. We had two first place winners. Uh, Ivy Menheim got first in the V sit and reach. She scored a 47 centimeters, which was the highest out of everyone. And then we had Sierra Ballard. She came in first in the pull ups with 18. This year, Team St. Tammany finished sixth overall in the meet. Um, it was a lot of hard work all year long. They did an awesome job. They had the best. Um, spirit and the best sportsmanship. They really had a wonderful day. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Congratulations to all the members of Team St. Tammany. This marked the second year in a row that Ivy Mendheim earned a gold medal at the state meet. She won two in 2012. Let's now head back to North Shore High where the school joined the ranks of high schools having college and career days on campus. This event was designed to educate students on the many opportunities available to them after graduation. Today's uh, event is basically to give students an opportunity to see what careers there are out there. And there were plenty of options for the students in attendance. We have people from the Court Recording Institute, which is a high earning career. We have the Louisiana Culinary School in uh, Baton Rouge. Delgado's here, Nunez Community College. We have Paul Mitchell with the uh, Vanguard. Two year colleges, we have some four year colleges, military organizations, and some career technical schools. Lots of choices and lots of good information. It truly made a difference. I learned a lot of different things today about each different, you know, career field. It gives a lot of people who haven't really like gone to any colleges and gotten any information to get some information. It's all available right here for them. Come to this and this will give you a jump start of what you want to do. Good news for the event coordinator who remembers what it was like when she was in school. 
I want them to leave here with a better understanding of what they're going to do once they graduate and to feel comfortable because I know when I was a senior in high school it's a little nerve-wracking. From the sound of it, these seniors are not experiencing any jitters after having participated in this college and career day. I'm focused more on a stable career in the medical field and I'm looking into radiology technology. I'm um, planning on going to Southeastern to major in graphic design. Biogenetics is here. I want to help like athletes that, like have their legs amputated so they can continue on playing. Good career choices. Yet one senior honed in on another reason this event helps everyone. Much, much easier than just trying to do this on your own. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Across town at Salmon High, students, along with their parents, attended a college and career night to receive guidance for navigating the sometimes complicated pathway after graduation. It's tough when you have someone leaving high school and heading off to college and all the uncertainty or that goes with that or whether they're going to go to a job or military or whatever. Well, tonight was all about our high school students, providing them with information so they can make sound decisions um, on what to do after graduating from high school. There's a wealth of information out there. It can get overwhelming. In order to ease the chaos, this program allowed for students and parents to visit four different seminars aimed at providing information about college preparation, the military, the Workforce Commission, and the North Shore Technical Community College. We had our college counselor as well as two counselors from our high schools to present. Information included uh, TOPS, uh, financial aid, uh, ACT prep, for the Louisiana Workforce Commission. They provided information pertaining to jobs that would be ready, available uh, for students immediately following high school for students who necessarily didn't want to attend college. We had representatives from the different areas of the military. They set up tables, they provided information and resources about their particular branch of the military, what it takes if you are interested, the uh, tests that you have to take and the process that you have to uh, go through to make that happen. We had the North Shore Technical Community College. We know that they provide um, different programs in different areas um, such as computer, whether it's nursing where students can take classes to be prepared in those areas. Lots of advice for students to use when focusing on their future. All students in high school and upcoming students need to pay attention to what they're saying. All they're trying to do is help us. And it is obvious that this Salmon High senior was listening as he walked away with a plan of his own. My plans are to go to college, play football, stay in my books, and get a degree. Salmon's Career Night was sponsored by the North Shore Greeks and Ministerial Alliance of Greater St. Tammany. It's never too late to start considering careers as you're about to see in our next story. Mayfield Elementary and Slidell held their second annual Career Day with many parents and community partners presenting information and sharing experiences relative to their various vocations to the students. Thank you, girl. We have an amazing variety of professions for the kids to actually visit with, talk with, and learn a little bit more about. We have so many different occupations. We have military men, fire marshals, they bought the fun house, nurses, just a slew of different people, different varieties of people that maybe our kids would have never even known existed. You're never too young to think about what you want to be when you grow up. And today at Mayfield Elementary's Career Day, they're doing just that. I believe the sooner the students understand what's available and the opportunities out there, they are going to be better equipped and actually have a better understanding as to why they're studying math, why they're understanding English, why it's so important to write. A lot of them have just no idea about what's out there and to kind of give them that little idea is an extra motivation for them to stay on task, to stay wanting to learn and to want to you know, be successful adults in the future. These motivated students had a lot of questions for the professionals. We've had lots of questions from ranging from um, getting their tonsils out to um, convulsions and seizures. Um, lots of people want to know why they get shots and why does it hurt and what can they do to not get those things. 
and the professionals in turn provided the students with very important information. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Principal LeBlanc acknowledged the hard work of the career day chairpersons, Mrs. Catron and Mrs. Singleton, in helping make the day a success. Heading over to Creekside Junior High in Pearl River, we caught up with the gifted and honor science students on Earth Day. Students shared their work with science classes on a variety of environmental initiatives they've been working on in the school year. Tiger Edwards gives us the green report. Yeah, and you also want to be sure to drill holes so the worms can breathe, but you have to be sure that they don't get out. Well, for Earth Day, my classes are showcasing the many projects that they've been participating in this year in order to make a more sustainable environment. One of the hands-on activities these students participated in was the growing of red maple, persimmon, and ball cypress trees from seedlings. We went to the Chinchuba Detention Pond in Mandeville and we planted over 800 trees. And hopefully what we're going to do here is not fight coastal erosion, but create habitat for wildlife. Providing a backdrop for ecosystems is important, but these students also had to tackle a problem a little closer to home. I read outside of our classroom, it floods all the time. And so we wanted to find a way to solve the the flooding problem. In doing so, these eighth graders also found a way to water their tree seedlings and the new square foot garden. They decided to put in a gutter system and use rain chains to collect the water into 250 gallon uh, containers. We've got six of them, seven of them set up al along the building and then there's two more storage buckets down at the end that are at a lower elevation and that's able to let the water table even out down there. So the storage water holds the buckets that go to the water pump and then you go straight to the garden from there. One of the projects being showcased today here at Earth Day at Creekside is the raising of paddlefish. That begs the question, why paddlefish? That's a good question. Paddlefish are a native species of Louisiana and the Pearl River. We're just keeping them in our tank and then when they get to finger length size, we're going to release them back into the river. Paddlefish is a protected species, and so, you know, we need to take care of them. So by us raising these and putting them back in the wild, we help the population. But more importantly, I think, is that we instill in our students the need for protecting what we have. And that's what all of these projects have in common. Protecting and sustaining the environment, the focus of this Earth Day event. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. The seedling project was a partnership with Coastal Roots and funded by a grant from the St. Tammany Federal Credit Union, an EPA Region 6 grant from the Louisiana Environmental Education Commission funded the rainwater catchment system. And remember, you can watch all of our shows in all kinds of ways. We're on Charter Channel 13 on the North Shore, AT&T UVerse Channel 99 both North and South Shore, and also live streaming from our webpage. To find our broadcast schedule, go to stpsb.org and follow the link to Channel 13. From our website, you can also watch shows on our Video On Demand page, where you can view our shows or download a show for future viewing into iTunes. We are also on YouTube. Just search Channel 13 St. Tammany Schools. Thanks for watching this edition of Chalk Talk. We close our show today with a special look inside the summer football workout programs at our local high schools. Join Channel 13's videographer David Williams, who captures the sights and reverberating sounds of these hardworking young men and coaches who are gearing up for some fall prep zone action. One, two, three, four! Oh, four. <laughs>
Come on, fellas, if you want big muscles, you gotta use big weights. Spread it at the end. Spread it at the end. Good. 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 Get on the ball of your foot. Keep your lean. Don't just get by, get better. Work on your craft. Work on your job. Five. Five. One. Let's get some air on them. Two, 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 two. Come on, Chris. 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 Come